Hello everyone, my name is Haley and I work here on the RedX content team and we are back with another exciting interview. We are here to help you and agents like you get clear expectations about how much time, energy, and money it takes to be successful at prospecting. Whether it's expireds for sale by owners, sphere of influence, uh, other things like that, we interview great agents so you can pull out the things that work for you and your business. Today, we have James Shelby, who has been in real estate six, for six years, and he's on track this year to sell about 75 homes, and you might recognize him because we did a live prospecting session with him not too long ago, where he prospected just listed, just sold. Um, but today, we're going to talk about how he prox prospects to his sphere of influence and the strategies and systems he uses to be successful. So thanks so much today for being with us, James. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so let's get into this. Here's what you can expect from today's interview. Uh, we'll get a, bit, a little clear idea of what sphere of influence marketing is, what you should do, why it's important, and how and when you should do it. Uh, so let's start with the what and the why of SOI prospecting. So James, uh, how do you define mm -hmm. sphere of influence? Uh, that's a good question because everyone kind of has their own um, definition of what that means. But for, for myself, I would say your sphere is anyone that would know who you were uh, based off of, you know, someone, your friends, your family, someone that you go to church with, your neighbors, um, people out in the community that you see on a regular basis, maybe your kids teachers or coaches um i would i would even throw in and and this is maybe a different part of the sphere but i would also throw in your past clients um as part of your sphere of influence or, or they should be someone that you're talking to on a regular basis so i i would definitely consider them part of your sphere or your data should be part of your database as well perfect uh, would you include people like that follow you on social media, Facebook friends, stuff like all of those people? Yes, yes, yeah. I'm, and and that's a whole other, you know, we'll get into that a little bit. But yeah, definitely people that you're Facebook friends with that uh, follow you, you know, on Instagram, things like that. Um, but I almost look at them, uh, Facebook and Instagram, you know, followers or friends in kind of a subcategory of of your sphere but you know we can kind of dive in a little bit more as we go on perfect great so a uh, follow-up question is how is sphere of influence prospecting different from other forms of lead generation so i'd say when it comes to reaching out to your sphere your past clients these are people that more than likely already know who you are know that you're in the business um you know when you call an expired listing or you're calling you're just straight cold calling or door knocking more often than not the people you're talking to don't know who you are so there's no real um vetting process really or they you know they don't have any type of history with you they don't know you they don't trust you already Whereas on the flip side of that, with, with your sphere, these are people that know you, they know what you do, or at least they should, and they, you know, more than likely are going to trust you more than someone that, uh, that they don't know at all. Perfect. Great. Um, and we'll get into how um, you prospect to those people, but why uh, do, you pref do you prefer SOI prospecting over other forms, and, and what makes that so attractive? I know these people already know you, um, but do you prefer mm -hmm. this way? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the spokes you should have in your, in your wheel of lead generation. Um, you know, I always look at it you know, lead generation kind of like a wheel, you know, the more spokes you have, the stronger your wheel is. And, right. and your sphere should definitely be a, a big part of that, I, I would say. Perfect. And, and what other types of prospecting do you do other than sphere? Yeah, so I do um, cold calling, you know, just listed, just sold kind of circle prospecting type of calls. We do um, expired listing calls. Uh, I also do a lot of 
lately I've been doing a lot of prospecting of businesses that are at a high, you know, very likely to have customers or clients to that business that are going to be moving or likely to sell a home, for example, um, lawyers, you know, divorce attorneys, family law attorneys that deal with people that, you know, you know, getting divorced, they have to sell their home, uh, mm-hmm. probate attorneys, you know, people pass away, their family's going to sell the home. Uh, and, and another one I've been doing, and this might be another topic for another show, but just to kind of plant this in people's ears to get people thinking, I've been going to a lot of senior care facilities as of late, um, oh. you know, assisted living, senior homes, and getting in contact with the personnel that is kind of the first contact for the new residents coming in. Because a lot of times, if you have a new resident that's going to be, you know, going into a senior facility, you know, for the for the end of their, you know, life, so to speak, they a lot of times have a home they have to sell before they can go in there. So that's been something, a new avenue of business that I've really been kind of honing in on. But, you know, again, that's probably another topic for another yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> No, I love that. You have a lot of different avenues of lead generation, which is perfect. Um, And so I guess my next question is what percentage of all of that lead, with all of that lead generation, what percentage comes from your sphere? How often do you prospect to your sphere with everything else? So I'm I'm hitting my sphere, you know, in a few different ways. Um, I would say, I, I would say probably a good, 70% 70% of, of my business does come from fear. Yeah. Um, now, I wouldn't say I, I'm prospecting them 70% of the time. You know, a lot of times referrals and things like that will come from your sphere that might not have been from a direct, you know, phone call to the sphere. Um, I would say I'm actually prospecting my sphere closer to probably 40% of the time actually you know calling or or you know but you know again we'll we'll get into it but there's other ways i'm reaching out to my sphere that is it's kind of a never ending um a never ending marketing to the sphere so to speak through social media and things like that so Perfect. you know there's a difference i would say between marketing to your sphere and actually prospecting your sphere you know when you're when you're doing things like posting on social media or you know posting about you know hey we just sold this home or even even running a branded or sponsored paid campaign through Facebook or Instagram to your sphere you know that's more marketing yeah and it's a great way to to always be top of mind for your sphere i highly recommend you know growing your social presence you know when it comes to things like Facebook People always ask me, well, how, who should you add? Or, you know, I only have, you know, 300 friends on Facebook. You should be maxed out, in my opinion. You should be maxed out on your friends list. Anyone yeah, you meet like in your 5, community, 000. you know, yeah. I Every time I, I go to the bank, if there's a new bank teller, I will get her name and add her, you know, on Facebook. Because awesome. these are people that see you every day. As weird as it might seem, I mean, you know, this is just the digital age, the social age that we live in. So anyone that I meet out and about that I know I'm going to run into on a regular basis, you know, a new new bank teller or, you know, someone at a restaurant that I frequent or anyone like that, coaches, I always say you got to add them to your social media because then that's a way for you to get in front of them with, you know, what you do, you know, selling homes on a regular basis without – having to mail them or call them it's it's more of a passive way for them to constantly be marketed to perfect so yeah when they do think of real estate or they're thinking of selling their home then your your name is top of mind it is will pop in their heads and boom yeah absolutely absolutely and when it comes to things like social media you know again another topic maybe for another time but i'll just touch on it briefly i think I think 90% of the agents out there are unfortunately not going about it the right way. They're yeah. sometimes hitting people over the head with real estate, not, you know, 24 seven, they're posting, you know, memes about real estate constantly, or, Hey, call me if you need to buy a house. You know, <laughs> I don't think that's the best way to necessarily go about it. I always tell agents and, and I've always kind of subscribed to the, 
to the kind of 60-40 rule. I like to keep social media as 60%, you know, and this isn't a hard, fast number, but roughly, you know, 60% or 70% of the stuff I post has nothing to do with real estate because we as realtors seem to think that, you know, everyone cares about every house we sell or, you know, every little <laughs> problem we have in the transaction. But the truth of the matter is no one really cares about that except maybe other realtors. Right. So I try to, I try to post things that are more just about lifestyle or, you know, what, what I've been up to or, you know, and then sprinkle in real estate every once in a while, just so people remember, oh yeah, you know, I, I love this guy's content, but oh yeah, I forgot, you know, he, he's in real estate, you know, just 30, 40% of the time, sprinkle out some real estate content, just so people, you know, they don't forget that you're in real estate. Yeah, I like that, because I think um, a lot of salespeople, real estate agents, they um, hammer so many people with real estate that it just becomes ingenuine, and it's, um, I think a fear that people have about sphere of influence prospecting or marketing or anything is sounding like a salesperson and not wanting to genuinely help somebody else. So how, how do you get that? I guess that's how you get it, that across is by your 60, 40 rule or things like that. So that people know you're not just there for, you know, real estate, that you're actually there just as a person that you're a normal person. And I like that. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. I, I, I look at it like this, you know, treat your, especially with Instagram, Instagram and Facebook are obviously two different beasts, but yeah. <laughs> especially with Instagram and the rise of Instagram, ev everyone, especially a lot of millennials, which make made up, I think the majority, if I remember what the, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I know they made up the majority of home buyers last year were millennials, people from, wow. I believe, you know, uh, from like, age 25 to 35 or something along those lines and those are the people that are on instagram constantly constantly i think they said the average millennial spends like 45 minutes a day on instagram so i treat instagram almost like a mini my own mini reality show i mean if you really think about it people follow personalities you know the kardashians you know all whoever you want to say from reality tv and if you can kind of become your own local little celebrity or uh, like Gary Vaynerchuk said, become the digital mayor of your town. You know, you're, you know, every hot spot in your local area, you know, all the best places to eat, you know, all the best um, spots to go get drinks, you know, you know, the best spots to spend your Saturday and Sunday. And people will gravitate toward that. They want to see those things. And none of those things have anything to do with real estate. But once they know, okay, this, is, this person's the local celebrity or, like I said, the digital mayor of our little area here. And, oh, by the way, they also sell real estate. They're going to be following you for the local content and, and, and the cool stuff that you do. And then when it does come time for them to either buy or sell a property, you're going to be the first person that they think about. Yeah. No, I love that. That's true. That's something like why I love being in marketing is because things are always changing. Uh, ways to do things are always changing and things are getting better. And, and like you say, millennials are on social media. And if you're not on social media, you're missing out on a tremendous amount of business. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, 100%. And the, the best thing I think about when it comes to one of the best things is for them to be able to reach out to you, they, at this point, they don't even have to call you. They can, they're one click away from messaging you and saying, hey, you know what, I just saw that home you posted, or, you know, I see that you know a lot about the area, you know all the local spots, and, and I see that you sell a lot of real estate. My mom actually needs to sell her house, or, you know, I, I see your content all the time, and I, I love it we've been thinking about buying a home in the area, you know, how do we get started? I mean, I get these messages all the time, but you know, it wasn't like that at first, but once you, once you put in the work and you've shown the proof that, Hey, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm constantly out working. You know, if, if you're door knocking already as an agent, if you're door knocking and you're prospecting, why not every once in a while post that you're doing these things? Hey, you know, I'm out in the community marketing our new listing, you know, it's a beautiful day and we're over here in the, you know, X, Y, or Z neighborhood and, 
Um, you know, one of the things I love about this neighborhood is the park down the street's got, you know, a, a water, you know, little water park or what, whatever the case may be. Now you're talking about real estate, but you're also showing some of the features and benefits of a certain community within your area that maybe someone that's new to the area or someone that's been following you didn't know about, you know, and, and now you're providing value. It's almost like your own little mini reality show. <laughs> and, you know, you're, you're giving people a reason to reach out to you and, and ask more questions sometimes. Yeah. So, so James, we've talked about social media and how you reach people via that. Do you actually call people? Do you call people that you know? Um, what, what other forms of profit yeah. projects do I do do? Absolutely. So I know this is more about prospecting the sphere. So I'll, I'll try to keep to that. Obviously, like I said, we do, you know, cold calling and, and door knocking and all those things. But yeah. I would say once a quarter, I'm, I'm reaching out to my database, my sphere, my past clients, and I'm physically picking up the phone and calling them. Um, and if I'm not able to sometimes reach them uh, through, you know, a phone call, I'll, I'll sometimes send a message or a text, you know, um, hey, you know, just thinking about you, just want to say what, you know, how are you, how's the family type of the thing, just to say top of mind, and I, and I will never shy away from asking them, hey, you know, who do you know that might need my help? Because sometimes, you know, it's always nice to call and, and, and shoot the shoot the crap, so to speak, and just kind of <laughs> see how the family is. Yeah. But, you know, this is a business, you know, and a lot of times, you you can make it as simple as, hey, you know what, it's been great speaking with you. I, I got to ask you the million dollar question. Who do you know that might need my help buying or selling real estate? You know, and a lot of times it's, it's going to be a little chuckle or, or you know, the, but the, it does plant the seed. Hey, you know what, I, my mom or, or my my neighbor was just talking about it. Or, you know, if you don't ask, sometimes you're not, as much as they might love you or as much as they might be an advocate for you and your business, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, forgetting to ask that question that you might lose out on a deal. So I, I always say you got to ask. You can make a little joke about it. You can say, hey, it's a million dollar question. I just got to ask. You know, no one's going to hate you for that. A lot of times we think, oh, gosh, I can't ask for business. It's embarrassing. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're, they know who you are. They know what you do. And, you know, they're not going to hate you for asking for business. In fact, if, they're, if, they, if they've had a good experience with you in the past or they're a, a good friend of yours, they're going to respect that you're, you're out there hustling. Yeah. And especially if you format it in the way of how can I help you? How can I help your loved ones? Because they know yeah, uh, that you're an agent. They want, they know that you're willing to help, which I feel like no one is going to reject <laughs> help, right? No. No, and, and if it's, you know, even if over the, we've been so fortunate to be in this business over the last four or five years, six years, because we've known nothing but an increasing market. So if you sold someone a home four years ago, there's a 99% chance it's worth a lot more now than it was when they first bought it. So even just calling them and saying, hey, uh, you know, Mr. Smith, great to speak with you. Just wanted to see if you wanted an updated market analysis so you know what your home's worth. You know, if you're providing a value, they might not have looked into it. And, you know, when you ask that question, trying to provide a value, you're simply just asking, hey, do you want to know what your home's worth now? That could spark, uh, uh, you know, hey, I'm glad you called. We were actually thinking of, you know, making a move. We need to downsize or we need to, a bigger home now. We had another kid or, you know, hey, we're actually going to be moving out of state now. Yeah. Um, but again, if you don't make the call and you don't ask the question, you know, you, you might not get the, uh, the call from them. Yeah, because odds are not a whole lot of other agents are calling them and saying, hey, can I help you genuinely from a friend, you know, so. Um, Correct, you know, yeah. Awesome. So, yep, absolutely. Like you said, um, like 70% of your business comes from your sphere and you're prospecting to them about 40%. Um, and that's, that's, those are big numbers. That's a big percentage. Um, and so, do you think that there are agents um, who are failing at this who maybe um, 
aren't doing as well with prospecting their sphere of influence, like, and, and because of fear, or what do you think makes agents fail at sphere of influence prospecting and marketing? Um, gosh, that's a great question. I mean, I don't even feel like I've, I've even scratched the surface, to be honest, of what I could be doing with my sphere. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of agents, you know, are, well, first and foremost, most agents aren't prospecting at all. So, right. <laughs> you know, if you're an agent listening to this right now, the sphere, your sphere is the low hanging fruit, as they always say, and, and the easiest person to call and have a conversation with, you know, um, I guess it depends on your personality. I mean, some people would rather talk to a stranger than have to call someone they know, but you know, I think it is fear, you know, fear is what stops us from doing most things that are going to be best for us, you know, so I would say a lot of it's sphere based and a lot of people aren't calling their sphere or, or reaching out to their sphere because they think they're going to be bugging them, you know, but if you can come at it, come at, look at it from a different way of, you know, how can I provide value to my friends, my family, the people I know, my past clients, you know, how can I just reach out and see if they need anything, you know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, as much as we think, as much as we think people won't forget about us, they do sometimes, you know, and if you know at, at your, in your heart of hearts that you're the best agent to help them, and that's, that's something that we should always keep in mind, you know, as a real estate agent, we always have to have the attitude that we are the best agent out there, yeah. that we are, there's no other agent that, that is going to be better servicing our past clients than us. And if we truly believe that, and we know that, when we reach out to ask them if there's something that they need help with, you're going to be coming from a place of, you know, service and a place of value. Yeah. It's all about having the right mindset, right? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Well, perfect. That actually goes right into the next thing I want to talk about with mindset and things like that. And this is more, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of how and when and what you do specifically. Uh, so let's start uh -huh. with, um, can you just take us through your day-to-day -day schedule, what you do first in the morning and what time you get to the office and just things like that, your routine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, I, I, I'm not, and I'll be 100% honest, I'm not one of the get up at 5, 5 a.m., you know, hit the gym type of guys. I, I've done that. I've been there. <laughs> It's just for me personally, it doesn't work um, or not even, not even that it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> and you know, I, I want to say that because I think there's this narrative going around that the only way you can be successful is if you wake up at 4 a.m. and run five miles every day. Like, you know, I, I think there's 100% uh, proofs in the pudding that those are productive and, and good things to do. I have no problem with it, but for me, I don't start the day like that. So um, I'm, I'm waking up probably about 6 a.m. I'm, I'm spending a little time with the family. I'm having my coffee in the morning and then I'm getting into the office. You know, I, I try to get into the office, you know, right about 8 a.m. And I do some role play with, uh, with my team. And then from there, we start prospecting. We start making our phone calls. Or we'll go out and today, like today, we went out door knocking this morning. Fridays is usually our door knocking day. So um, we get in, we get in, we have our, you know, our flyers or whatever we're going to be door knocking with. And we hit, hit the doors. Um, and then from there, I'm usually uh, just grabbing a quick bite to eat and then preparing for any appointments that I have, you know, in the later afternoon. And then after my appointments, I'll, uh, I hit my, my, uh, fitness and I'm, I'm a big fitness guy, but I always usually go in the, the evening. So I'm, I believe in fitness and I'm a strong believer in taking care of your body and watching what you eat and all that stuff. I just handle it at a different part of the day than yeah. you know, some other people. I like that. And, and for me personally as well, I am not a morning person <laughs> and I cannot to save my <laughs> life, get up early enough to go to the gym. Um, so yeah, I'm also, I, I usually go later at night too. Um, but that's just like a testament of not, un it doesn't mean that you're unsuccessful if you're not going to the gym in the morning or you're not doing certain things in the morning or you don't even wake up as early as most people. 
I think you, Absolutely. whatever works for you works for you. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and there were times where I was killing myself, you know, I was getting up, I would get up at four 30. I'd go to the gym at 5. AM. I would, I would do my workouts in the morning, yeah. but I was, I was unhappy. I was pissed off. I was, I was stressed out and it just, for me, wasn't working, you know? And, and I think it's important to not, um, I, I want to kind of be careful with what I say because I don't want, I don't want to make it seem like they're, you know, you just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. You don't need a schedule. You don't need, you know, I, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm just, I think everyone should have a schedule and a set time that they're prospecting a set time that they're, you know, going to the gym, taking care of themselves, me, you know, doing meditation, all these things are important. I just think everyone's schedule is, is different. You know, you should have a schedule. You shouldn't just be randomly flying by the seat of your pants, but your schedules might be different than someone else's, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, I think that's good, too, because why we do so many of these interviews is because different agents have different routines, and they have uh, some people are very strict with their daily schedules to the minute, to the hour of what they're doing every single day. And that's great. And that works for a lot of people. But for some people who aren't like that, they are more fluid. They want to be more, um, you know, adaptable or easygoing. Then that doesn't really work for them. And that's that's OK. And so that's why I like talking to so many different people, because you get so many different insights from so many different lives and routines. So that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And and it took me a while to, to kind of be okay and comfortable in my own skin. And, and you know, because yeah. it, everyone wants to be the, the person that grinds all the time and works 24-7. And that's kind of like the cool thing to do. And, and, it, and it is important. I don't want to act like, you know, you can, you can be super successful in real estate and not work at all. That That's just bullshit. That's not true. But you don't have to do it the same exact way that other people do it. You know, you have to find the way that works for you and you have to grind, you have to work hard, but you know, it might just be in a different way or a different schedule. Cause comparison is the thief of joy, right? So if you're comparing yourself to someone 100%. that is doing is more, has more transactions or gets up earlier or things like that, that's just, that's going to make you unhappy. 100%. And if you're waking up at 5 a.m. and you hate your life because, hmm. you know, it's your workouts are mediocre because you're sleepwalking through them or you're, you know, the mindset's already ruined. You know, I mean, right. I know for some people waking up early gets them in a great mindset and they've got all their things out of the way. And, you know, and that's awesome. I think that's great if that works for, for most people. But for me, it didn't work that way. I was more unhappy and unproductive because I was just tired and miserable. <laughs> By the time I started talking to people on the phone, I just want to go back to bed. Right. And, and so to go into more of like your mindset, and I guess that goes into your schedule and how you, how you found out what worked for you that improved your mindset, but what else do you use to keep a positive mindset and to get on your calls every day and to do your daily tasks as a real estate agent? Um, wow, that's a good question. I would say just knowing the goals that I have for myself, you know, yeah. knowing that, you know, we're still not there, you know, whether we're on track to hit goals or we're behind or whatever, having a goal is important. I think, you know, whether it's a huge, crazy goal, or it's just a goal that is a little more, I, w I would say this when it comes to goals, because if you have goals, you have something that you're working towards, you know, rather than just saying, Oh, I'm just going to see what we can, what we can get done. You know, if you say, look, I want to sell, you know, a home a month, you know, if, if you're just starting out and that's your goal, I want to sell one home a month. Now you have a target. Now, you know, okay, this is why, you know, this is why I'm getting up every day because I'm trying to hit my goal. This is why I'm calling every day. I'm trying to hit my goal. I'm going to hit my goal. Um, you know, when you talk about mindset and things like that, you know, it, it can be, it can be somewhat difficult because, you know, prospecting is monotonous. 
you get rejection, you get people yelling at you, you know, these things happen. But I think at the end of the day, if you have, number one, like I said, a goal, and number two, a reason why you're, you know, people talk about your why, I think that's important to have something that's maybe a little bit bigger than yourself, whether maybe it's your family, or maybe it's just a certain financial goal, or maybe it's something that you want to do with the money that you're going to make. I mean, I think it's important to to kind of dig a little bit deeper as to why it is you got into real estate in the first place, because most people didn't get into real estate because they like to be, you know, mediocre or have some, you know, basic income. Most people get into real estate because they have big, big goals and they know that this is the vehicle that they can get into taking there, you know, if they do it the right way. Yeah. That's awesome. I love, I love goals, mindset, all of the things that you're talking about. And I think that is so important um, just in everybody's everyday life. So that's great. Awesome. So, and and I want to move a little bit to um, your, I want to get more into your SOI marketing strategy. Like I want to talk more about just your everyday and how you, how you do that. Um, I know we talked about your social media and stuff like that, but um, let's get more into your actual strategy. Um, I know you talked about marketing versus prospecting. But let's get into your SOI marketing. Can you give me like a brief overview of what you do? Yeah, so I mean, I, first and foremost, uh, when it comes to marketing, I try to really limit the amount of money spent because, you know, Real estate is no different than any other business in the sense that your end goal is to make as much profit as possible. So right. when it comes to, you know, marketing, I, I, I want to stress that it's important that our, your goal is not to spend as much money as possible. It's, it's to make as much money as possible. So that's why I love social media and that's why I love Facebook and Instagram because it's uh, – I would say that should be your number one focus when it comes to marketing. Prospecting, prospecting should be your number one thing you do every day to generate business. But when it comes to marketing your sphere, that's where you want to start. Be very yeah. active on social media. You know, be, um, you know, be, be, you don't want to be a secret agent, you know, so to speak. You know, there's a lot of people that are in real estate and never let anyone know that they're in real estate. <laughs> It's, right. it's the worst thing you could do. Um, so I would, I would say first and foremost, starting with your social media, secondarily calling your sphere on a regular basis. Um, and both of those things are free, essentially. They only yeah. cost time. Now, when we get into spending money, um, there's a company called Ylopo that I use that creates my website, and they also do – Um, Facebook marketing. So essentially what they can do is create a target audience built off of your sphere through your, you can give them pretty much a list of your Facebook friends, a list of your, you know, database with your, the emails and all that. And they can create a target audience based off of your sphere and your database and your Facebook friends and people that know you and know who you are. And then you can actually run paid advertisements i like to call it like a digital billboard so you think of a billboard people drive by it every day right and they see whatever it is that's advertised there with facebook or instagram it allows you to to basically have these digital billboards to where your your ad or your billboard is popping up all the time in front of people that already know who you are already know what you do and now they're seeing okay this is Oh wow, there's that James Shelby guy again. He's, you know, there there's his billboard, his digital billboard again, and you're staying top of mind. And again, you've got some sort of call call to action on there. Hey, you know, if you need some real estate help or this or that, you know, click here. So you know, you're just one click away from them contacting you, you know, um when they need something. And then lastly, you know, I don't do this as much. It's something I'm doing a little bit more is I'm actually physically mailing out, you know, old school mailers to just my sphere. So instead of casting this huge wide net and mailing out randomly to 300 random homes, I'm starting to dial it in and mail to 
people that already know who I am, friends, family, and past clients. And that way they're also seeing on a regular basis, you know, even if it's a just listed or just sold or uh, some sort of a holiday greeting, something maybe once a quarter or, or maybe once a month that you're sending out. And again, it's not like you have to send thousands of them just to whatever your database is. Maybe it's three or 400 or maybe it's 200 or maybe you just pick, hey, these are our top 50 people that I know would refer business to me and you're mailing them on, on a consistent basis. So those, those you know, three, four avenues is, is where I would start. And it's really not going to cost very much money, and and the results are going to go a long way. That's awesome. How how much success do you think? I don't know if you can put a number on it or um, what, but how how well does that work for your business? Well, you know, like we talked about at the at the beginning of the interview, about seventy percent of my business comes from from my sphere and past clients. So it's yeah. it's working well. You know, if I could get that number up a little bit, you know, that'd be great. Um, but it is working well, you know, and and there's other things you can do that, that maybe cost a little bit more once you build your business to, to that next level. You know, I, I always recommend doing client appreciation events once or twice a year, you know, getting all your clients together and saying, thank you. I mean, I just did one. Um, I rented out a movie theater and, and showed the new toy story movie to like 200 of my past clients and a couple, a couple, you know, close friends. Oh wow! And from the, yeah, from that I had already generated two, I guess you could say leads or people that said, hey, you know, we need to sell in the next couple of months. So and and I just just did that. So it, it you know it cost me. Uh, what did it cost me? I think it was like I don't know, eighteen hundred dollars or something. So it's it's kind of expensive, but you know within those two leads, you know that's. One of, one of the leads is in a, a place called Oceanside near the beach. So that's, you know, that's the $500,000 sale, you know, 3% of that, you know, whatever that's 15 grand or whatever. Um, and then the other one was like a $300,000 home that they need to sell. So, you know, the ROI, as long as you're reaching out after these events and thanking them for coming, you know, again, asking that million dollar question, Hey, Appreciate you coming out to our event. I hope you guys had fun. Did you have a good time? Yes, we did. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. A million dollar question. Who do you need? Who do you know that needs my help? You know, a lot of times they're gonna they're gonna think a little harder because you just provided not only you know some value on the phone call, but also you know a great client appreciation event for them and their family to enjoy. So they almost feel like they need to reciprocate at some point. And and not that that's the only reason you do them, but it, it, it's a huge, huge way to uh, to generate more leads. You know, once you've established yourself as a as a business, you know, that's not something that a new agent's going to do. But once you reach that point, and again, you don't have to rent out a theater every time. You could do, you know, an ice cream social, or you could, you know, do a uh, a small maybe private dinner. Um, you know, there's all different types of events that you can do to uh, to spend some time with your sphere and and generate some more referrals. I, I love that. I think uh, if, if you're renting out a movie theater or you're doing something like that uh, and people ask those people that are going to those events like, oh, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, actually, uh, the person that sold my house <laughs> is just like giving us some ice cream or we're going to a movie theater or whatever. And it's that's going to resonate with other people like, oh, wow, they're, that person um, really values who they work with and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, and I like, and, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I, I'll, I'll say when you're done. Sorry. Awesome. Uh, well, I was just going to ask you, um, because you talked about maximizing your profit in real estate. How, how do you determine when you do invest um, and spend money? Like when you said that you spent about 1800 on a movie theater, um, how, how do you determine those things? You know, I mean, some things, some things you, you're throwing against the wall to see if they stick. You know, I mean, not everything is a, uh, an exact science, but yeah. you know, the when it comes to, I guess, maximizing profit, there is so there are so many different things, especially when you first get into real estate, that you're being bombarded with companies. You know, Zillow's calling you. You know, Realtor.com. What you know, they're not really. A, 
lead generation anymore, but there, there's all these different companies that call you and say, hey, you know, pay us, you know, three, four, 500, 1,000, you know, a month, whatever the number is, and we're going to send you these leads. And the thing is, a lot of the internet leads and, and these lead generation companies, the, the leads are very weak, so to speak. And, and, you know, a lot of money is wasted. And if you're a new business or even an established business, you never want to be wasting money. So, you know, right. the, the less of these types of things you start chasing, and, and the better. And the more you're leveraging the people you know and your time, you know, dialing for dollars, you know, cold calling, door knocking, these are all things that are free and you're able to maximize your profit. So, you know, I, I would say don't chase the shiny objects. Don't, don't waste the money on these things. You know, when it comes to you've done 10, 12, 20, 30 transactions and it's time to give back, you know, as a client appreciation event, that's money well spent. Whether you generate a lead or, or you don't, you know, it, you know, obviously the goal is to, to generate leads, but giving back is first and foremost to your clients. And when you give back, things are always going to come back around, whether it's immediately after the event or six months down the road, it's always going to come back around. So I, I say use all the free avenues first, your time, your social media, your you know effort, those are all free things. And then once you start having a little bit of success and you don't have as much time because you're busy, then you can start using things like YLOPO to, to have your digital billboard. You can start mailing out your mailers to your sphere. You know, you can start doing your client appreciation events um, because they're always they're always going to pay off in the end. Yeah. Well, I think that's what's so cool about real estate is you can get into it, and there are so many, like you said, aven free avenues that you can use to build up your client base and things like that. Um, and then once you get more established, it's uh, you can do other things, but it doesn't take that much. It just takes, I mean, it takes hard work. It takes effort. It takes a desire, but it doesn't take a whole lot of money. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, you either have a lot of time and no money or, you know, you know, a lot of money and not as much time because you're busy now and you're closing That's a bunch true. of deals. And once you get to the point where you have a bunch of money, but not very much time because you're busy, that's when you need to start leveraging and using some of that money uh, because you just don't have as much time as you did in the beginning. You can't prospect for five hours a day, you know, with, like you can when you're first getting started. It's just not, not feasible. But now you can spend a little bit of money on marketing or, you know, uh, kind of the, some of the stuff we had talked about. Awesome. Well, yeah, I love this. I love the maximize your profit and, and things like that. Um, and, and I think this has been awesome just talking about your tactics and your strategy and your systems and stuff. Um, so just to wrap things up, is there anything else that comes to mind that agents ought to know that we haven't discussed yet? Um, you know, we, regarding mindset you had asked earlier, I think it's, in, it's very important to surround yourself with agents that are doing a, a large amount of transactions whether you're just getting started or you've been in the business for 20 years, you should be around other agents that are doing a large amount of transactions because then it shows you exactly what's possible. I think sometimes when you're first getting started, just getting one deal seems almost impossible, you know, um, or maybe you fell into your first deal and think, oh, this is going to be easy. And then six months goes by and you can't find another deal and you start to think, well, you know, I just, this isn't, this isn't for me or I, you know, the people that do a high amount of volumes are, you know, they're just superstars and I'm not like that. The more you spend time around top producers and the more you listen to things like this podcast and other podcasts that are available and you go to seminars, you go to the Mike Ferry events, you go to Tom Ferry events, when you start seeing that the people that are doing a large amount of transactions are just normal people they're just either working harder or working smarter or maybe a combination of the both, you know, both those things, you start to see what's possible. I remember when I first got into real estate, you know, my goal was like, Hey, if I can just do one a month, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be rich, you know? And 
when I went to my first Mike Ferry event, it really opened my eyes that, you know, people just like me are doing 80, 80 deals, 50 deals, 100 deals a year. You know, I can do it too. And it not only, not only did it, I see what was, you know, that I could do it. I saw that people were, you know, I didn't even think about doing that many transactions. I was thinking, hey, if I can do one a month, great. When I started being around people that were making over, you know, 800 grand a year, a million dollars a year from selling real estate, it really opened my mind, expanded my mind and taught me to think bigger. And it really helps your mindset because you see that these people are going through a lot of the same struggles that you are as well. They're just tackling them in a different way. So, you know, I would say if you're a new agent or maybe an agent that's been doing it a long time, but just hasn't had a lot of success, you know, Get, get around those people, listen to those things, listen to those podcasts, watch the YouTube videos, because it's really going to help, uh, help your mindset a lot. Yeah, and I, and I think it's important that we talked about how, um, how you can start very easy and simple with things that you can do with very little money, because I think some people look at the top producers and what they're doing. And they're like, oh, that costs so much money to do all these things. There's no way I'm going to make it. But it's important to realize that they started at the same place that you did of not having much money to do a bunch of things. And and they had to do the nitty gritty stuff. And, and that's why they are where they are. Doing what they are right now isn't necessarily going to be the best because it is more expensive and they've been in it for a while. But if you do the things that they did at the beginning, I think – that will show you um, how you can become a top agent. 100%. And, you know, a lot of times it's important to look at, at those, the, the spend, right? We talk about maximizing profit. And, you know, if you are – I see so many times that people get so wrapped up in the, the number of transactions that they forget about. It's not necessarily about the number of transactions, but how much money you're keeping at the end of the day. So you can right. look at a lot of these teams – that are spending ten, twenty thousand dollars a month on marketing, you know, Zillow and, and all these things. And yeah, maybe they're making, you know, eight hundred grand uh, in commission, but by the time, you know, they're spending twenty grand a month on marketing, you know, times twelve, you've got two hundred and forty grand there, and then you've got a, you know, five agents or ten agents on the team. And they're all on a 50% split. So you're splitting, you know, the rest of them. I mean, by the time you chop it all up, the owner of the team might only be making a hundred grand, maybe, you yeah. know, and, and, and doing a hundred deals a year, but only making a hundred grand that, that just doesn't make sense to me. I'd rather be a small team spending hardly any money with maybe one or two agents. Right now I have two other agents on my team. Um, I, I still do the majority of the transactions, but you know, once you get to a certain point, you have to start leveraging other people. But, you know, we might not be making as much gross income as some of the bigger teams, but I'm keeping a whole hell of a lot more of it at the end of the day. So, you know, it's not always about how many transactions you do. It's about how much money you keep in your bank account at the end of the day. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I love that. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, James, for just letting us talk to you and, and get into your business and what you do every day. I really appreciate you trying to help other agents be successful um, in their own businesses. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And can I just say real quick, if you're listening to this, I'd love to connect with, I, I love to connect with agents all across the world on, uh, on Instagram um, I think I'm at capacity with, with Facebook. I don't think I can add anyone else. But uh, if you search James Shelby or James underscore Shelby on uh, Instagram, um, I would love to connect with um, with every agent out there. And, and I, sh I if there's anything I can do, DM me. I'll share any knowledge. I share, like, contact worksheets. A lot of times people ask me for this certain contact worksheet that I have, grips, anything uh, that I can do to help. And obviously, if you have any Southern California referrals, I'd love to pay, pay you for those as well. So we'd love to connect with anyone that's listening. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll leave those links down below um, on this podcast page where you can contact James. Um, but I think that wraps it up for today. So thank you so much. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate you. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye.